Next big job on the van is to close in these walls. And I'm going to do that with the same cedar plank I've used on the ceiling. This will be stained to match the countertops. And this will be painted a kind of a light gray that should blend in nicely with the fabric I've used on the flares and up for the headliner shelf. I've also got to close in. I'm going to do some trim work on, on these pillars. And I'm going to leave it kind of open around the flares, but I am going to cover this up kind of like I did over here. And then the cedar will come down this pillar as well. So for this, I'm going to have a spice rack built in, kind of centered over the stove and up a little high so it doesn't get splattered with oil. Um, just going to kind of play that by ear as I go, but I'm thinking of making four uh, studs essentially. I'm going to laminate two pieces of half inch marine ply together and maybe two inches wide and then do four of those across. And then there will be some uh, rivet nuts into the body as well. And that should give it plenty of purchase for the cedar plank walls. Also going to have an outlet over here. Just another one of these outlets that has USB built in and AC. Uh, also, on the other side of that will be a paddle switch like this one. And that's going to control the strip LEDs that are underneath the overhead cabinet. So that'll be kind of a light for the stove area and food prep or whatever. And I'm going to have one on either side of the bottom of the cabinets down here just to light the aisle way. So it'll be a double paddle again with one side controlling the aisle way LEDs and then the other side controlling the overhead LEDs. And that should really start making the interior come together and look more like a little tiny home than a uh, cargo van. But I don't have a very good plan for this. It's not, I'm not sure how I'm going to attach it yet. I could just bond it with a urethane adhesive, but I don't want to do that. So I'm probably going to end up doing a, uh, some kind of a riv nut into the body and then maybe a screw going through at an angle or possibly coming from the backside with uh, a lag small lag bolt. I haven't decided. And I also don't want to remove this cabinet to get to these two, so I'm gonna have to probably come out, come up with an idea to attach those without removing all of this, if I can. It's just, it seems like that'll be a lot of, a lot of work, and I really don't look forward to removing this cabinet yet again, especially now that it's all kind of done and functional and super quiet while we're driving, and everybody's happy. I'll leave well enough alone there. So, First things first, I'm going to get started on making some 31 inch long studs for this wall and get them glued up so that tomorrow I can start cutting and figuring out what the heck uh, the plan is over here. Let's get started. All right, I've jumped ahead just a little bit to save some video time experimenting with angles and such, but I've ended up with about a 30 degree angle on the top of the stud, and that's going into a riv nut, um, which I'll show you here. I'll do the whole process with the next stud, and then I just drilled a hole through and then followed that with a Forstner bit, and I did a button socket cap screw into that riv nut on both ends, and it's very strong. I, I may follow this up with some urethane because this is not going to be removable. I don't want any squeaks or anything, but it's very solid, um, and it'll be more than ample for holding the wall up. I just don't, I want it to be able to take an impact if, you know, fell against it or something. Um, see a lot of people do this with self-tapping screws. I, I would never use a self-tapping screw in this application. Uh, they have their place, but putting them into thin body sheet metal in a, an application where there's going to be a lot of vibration and motion is, is not that place. Um, 
you've also got a lot of expansion and contraction with heat cycling and self-tapping screws just not a good fit for this you want backing you want a nut on the back on the other side if you could get there i probably could have finagled a, a locking nut or something into the back side of this and done a bolt but i feel like with that just going through plywood it would have been kind of wasted strength i'm real happy with the rib nut here i'll either back the face of this with felt or i will put urethane on there to make sure that it doesn't uh, come loose or anything and i'll probably use a little bit of uh red loctite on the threads so the plan is to do two more of these or rather three total um, one will have the outlet on the left hand side and the other will have a spice rack in between uh, i don't know the exact size of that yet but it's probably gonna be 12 small bottles we plan to do a fair amount of cooking in here so i don't want spices rattling around in a the drawer they're going to have the lids screwed up onto a piece of wood and then the jars will just screw into the lids and Hopefully that'll be sufficient for what we're doing. Uh, but right now, I will go through the process I used to make these studs. It was a little bit time consuming, but now that I have one done, I can relatively mass produce them. And we'll go from there. So now, if you can see, I've got a relief that is parallel to the flat surface that's gonna hit the van body. It doesn't have to be perfect. That body sheet metal's thin. It'll flex around a bit. Got a little bit of a relief for the top of the rib nut so that this will sit more flush against the sheet metal. I don't want squeaks. Um, and the more surface it's contacting the sheet metal, the better. So that's where we are now. We're gonna drill this pilot hole and continue that into the van body. Um, and then we'll be drilling both of these out to quarter 20 and quarter inch for quarter 20 bolts and get this guy bolted in. Really is a nice flush fit. Uh, it's gonna match the cedar up to the body up here really nicely. If you had a little bit of a, if it was a little bit proud and you wanted to take it down, you could easily sand some of the top of this off. Or a lot of ways you could pick up a little bit of slack. But I think this is a really good method if you don't wanna bring the body, uh, your van wall out away from the body more. I wanna maximize my width and height of this van. So I've been trying not to have a fully framed in van. It's much better for insulation and lack of thermal bridging, but that's not what I'm going for here. And I live in Florida, so, you know, by and large, it's, it's pretty hot and it's just going to be hot. If you've got some better ideas for how you would do studs or some that you've already done, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Uh, for now, I'm gonna do two more of these and then figure out my width for this spice rack and move on from there. Now for this two studs behind the stove, I mulled over a few ways to do this because I'd like to attach them the same way as I attached these two, but the counter would have to come all the way back out and I'm not taking the counter all the way back out. So unless I absolutely had to. So this is flush with the back side of the counter. So what I've decided to do if I can swing it is I'm going to take the stove out and I'm going to screw into the stud from the back of the counter, just through the counter frame and that'll cinch it up against the counter. I'll just have to remember if I ever go to remove the counter that it's also attached to the wall. And then the top will attach by the same method. So two more rib nuts and two or, two or four wood screws going through the cabinet and that should affix everything. And then I'll just be able to frame in. I'm gonna have rib nuts going down the sheet metal on both sides in different places to catch this wall panel. Um, and that should, that should finish up closing it in. Before I can go any further with the wall studs, I need to work on my spice rack. <clears throat> and the general idea here is I've got, uh, I've got 12 two and a half ounce jars. I'm going to use 10 of them, because that's all I can reasonably squeeze in with any kind of symmetry. So I want them centered over the stove because I'm a bit OCD and it's gonna drive me crazy if they're off center. So 
we'll have the outlet on this side and then a 12 inch wide two level spice rack and these will be up about as high as I can get them and, and they'll just are about three quarters of a turn and they come out they should hold in there pretty securely if they don't again I'll figure out something else but for the moment I need to make this rack before I can go much further and I'll probably do a little bit more insulation around here I haven't decided yet uh, if I need to or if I will but uh, right now I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can dig up some half inch poplar or something to use for a frame for this and I'll kind of end up modeling it after of the shelves that I've built into the sides of the cabinet I just added some cork to the bottom of these which is really nice I got it on Amazon the adhesive didn't work it lifted almost immediately so I sprayed them with a some 3m spray adhesive I think it's 77 I can't remember um, and it holds down real nicely otherwise the stuff kind of just lifts up so in any case that's where we are